Drum roll. He's coming, that light of Judah, he's coming, do get ready, Jesus is coming, do get ready, Jesus is coming, he's alive. And he's coming Jesus Yes, great news Great news And um, I don't uh, You know Haven't been making many videos Basically because You know, not a lot's been happening Covid is sort of load everything down you know the movement the 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 joy that's supposed to be growing you know covid kind of was a bit of a stuck in the mud for that but um finally something has come to me and that is um yeah jesus is coming <laughs> i can hear my son creeping on the stairs because he obviously thinks I'm in my midlife, <laughs> midlife crisis. And I've been telling him, no, I've finished my midlife crisis. So I had a dream last night. And it wasn't a very long dream. It was like one of those waking ones pretty quick. And what I saw was, what are you doing with that? Oh, Shall I do it for you? I don't get to matter. Quick. Let me do it because you always spill it. And then the whole place stinks of butane. Dude. It still smells bad breath. Uh, right, so yeah, so. Oh, shit. You know, I had this little dream last night, real quick, but it was very significant to me. Uh, if I describe it, it may sound a bit rubbish, so let me just tell you that what I'm describing is just a sort of a visual element that linked it, but the main thing is the feeling that I got from it. Right, so, last night in a dream I saw a little stick man. That's <laughs> how I can describe this figure. But I've only seen this figure once before, and that was about seven years ago. Uh, not quite seven years ago, coming up for it in about a month or two. What, your flint? Oh, God. You do this on purpose. I'll explain it. Yeah, it comes into it anyway. <laughs> Get the other lighter, that actually works as well. It does work if you're not a massive, you know, weakling, yeah. Give it here. See? Just take them both. <laughs> As if they don't have to put up with enough. You've got to put up with those interruptions as well. I'm all hot. It's all the lights. Right, so this stick figure that I'd only seen once before, about seven years ago, coming up for seven years. So, back in 2014, September the, was it the 23rd, I can't remember, 22nd to the 23rd, that night, the 22nd, 2014. That's when I had my green mist surrounding me, as I've written in my song, my, like when God said hello, sort of thing. Not that I was sure I knew what it was at the time. But when I was doing that experiment, going without cannabis for two weeks, smoking one, and I was getting back to that sort of level where I could communicate with God, 
And it was the second or the third time that I did it, I was sitting outside and the sun was out. And I, I, I got into that high level and there was like this figure on the sun. And this is the figure that I saw in my dream last night. And, you know, last few months, I suppose I've been thinking, you know, what's going on? When's this, you know, when's something going to come out of this? And I've just been getting the feeling, you know, it's God's plan, you know, and I know with God, timing is, is the main thing. His timing is perfect. And then seeing that in my dream this morning, probably also I've had sort of, been having sort of feelings in the run up, you know, it sort of feels like, you know, I have been reminded that it's coming up for seven years as well, that since those first major sort of breakthroughs that I had. And seeing that in my dream um, just let me know that that Jesus is here. So I knew back seven years ago when I saw that figure on the sun that this figure was like, in a sense, communicating with me. You know, I was getting a strong feeling from this figure. And like, on the sun, how can a figure be on the sun, right? You know, Father God, Son... You know, Mother God, Earth, Planet, you know, I've said all that before, right? So it's as though Father God has uh, created a being, or it's an element of Father God that's come. And, you know, should we call this the Christ? Is this the Christ? Now... Obviously, I've got this chance of, you know, I've said it before and, you know, it's issues me become big-headed, saying that I was the Christ and whatever. Um, you know, but through connecting with God, did I trigger something? You know, was it all in God's plan that that was going to happen and someone said something to me that triggered me? You know, all sort of this connected web, however it is. You know, I can only talk for what I see and know. So uh, this figure in my dream last night, it wasn't over on the sun, it was it was in some sort of alleyway or some sort of hallway and I, I saw I saw it but it, it's more it's more the feeling that it produces you know brought me straight back to that figure I saw on the sun that was you know and I haven't seen it anywhere since. So I'm thinking does it takes seven years or something to travel to the sun from the sun. Now I know, I know we're supposed to be due for this man of perdition, the Antichrist will re reveal himself, but I think that's been done. I think we're there. I think the reason I'm not expecting, um, you know, the, the the end time now is because we're not there yet. But we've got good news bits along the way. So the only bit of good news that we're due now is when the Lamb is standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. That is due, if my uh, decoding of the revelations is correct. You know, we are due for that now. That should be here before 2033. Because 2033 is the fifth trumpet, and that's a bad trumpet, that's a big one. But we're not going to be... Uh, completely alone and it's almost like you know and people do speak like this it's like God has has gone uh, for a lot of people or if we go back over the last hundred years maybe people feel like God has abandoned us and you know that has very much to do with if people have abandoned God so if with technology coming up and everything, people were less reliant on God and more reliant on the mechanic to fix their vehicle, you know, kind of God's part had less to play. And if we abandon God, then, you know, God couldn't do anything about it. Well, they want to get on without me. I'll let them get on without me. This is free will. But, you know, what? look at the, the, the kind of the state that we've got into, not just, you know, what we're doing to the planet, but our own lives, the way, I mean, we might, there are good things about it as well, but, you know, we're not particularly connected to nature, and we're not particularly healthy and fit and all the rest of it. Well, of course, some people are. 
but we've gone downhill. And anyone, I mean, mental health problems, come on. No matter how much technology you throw at it, yeah, you can be happy while you're playing the game, but if the lights went out tomorrow, your game's not going to work, is it? So what would you do then? This is the real life game. <clears throat> you wake up in the morning and uh, your batteries are recharged and you, you, you do what you do. Play the game. So, you know, and this has happened before. And it's probably, you know, said in the Bhagavad Gita, a Christia, Krishna, son of the super soul or whatever, comes every thousand years or so, that's what it says. So what, you know, God's timing, so what, what, what am I going to expect? Well, um, the other thing I'm expecting is some sort of riot as well. Um, this wasn't worth making a video about, but... It was a good couple of months ago, I had a dream. I was picking my son up from his old school uh, in my car, and um, I looked at the clock, and it was 7:59, and the sun was just setting. So that gave me the time of year that this was going to happen. And one of Francis' friends, there, there was one kid like whacking my car, and that wasn't really annoying me. It, wasn't doing any damage and then one of his friends came over the back of the car and was that tall because this was like a Citroen van and he's shaking the back of it and I was sort of thinking not now it's too early but anyway and then I woke up so that dream told me that uh, kids aren't going to be happy they're going to be rioting around the time when the sun sets at 7.59 p.m. and that's Basically, today it sets at 8 o'clock, tomorrow it's going to be 7.58, I think. It's changing by about two minutes a day. So it's today or tomorrow that that's supposed to kick off. But interestingly as well, the, the, the car I had when I had the dream, only two months ago, uh, about a month later broke down, broken suspension at the back. <laughs> so I don't know whether it was about that, uh, but it didn't have the sunset time. So I don't know, but uh, when I see it, when I have a dream in the morning, like soon, you know, I'm waking up and I've just had the dream and I'm waking up, that means it's immediate. That means whatever I'm dreaming is happening now. And that one with the car shaking, I can't remember what time of night I had that. But last night or this morning, I saw Christ, Jesus is Christ, uh, down down the hallway, you know, in the on the, on the planet, on the planet, and it wasn't on the sun. So it's 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 now, it's it's here now, and I, you know these things happen. So I would say expect some sort of uh, salvation miracle, um, good thing um, within the next two months at least, um, and at least you know. It's why I like to make the video as soon as possible because, you know, if I think about it too much, think about what I'm going to say and that, you know, I feel that spoils it. So even though I might get some more information that I want to share, you know, I'm giving you to this to you fresh. And in particular, in a way, I didn't really want to um, because, in a sense, if I'm saying it now, now there's pressure, you know, have I got to do something to make it happen and... You know, really, I just want to go with the flow and let God lead. But I am able to, you know, today, especially after having that dream, and I wasn't particularly able to before, but I'm quite able to refresh the feeling that I've got with um, this element of Jesus, our Father. And I'm wondering if this is the Christ. Now, of course, I've um, entertained the possibility that uh, this could be some sort of malignant force fooling me. And I think even in the dream, I was, a, I was checking. 
you know, because it's a, a silhouette figure, basically. But it's basically a stick man. It's, it's hard. <laughs> you know, the visuals aren't the important bit. It's the feeling that I got from it. And, you know, I do the checks, you know, this god. And I felt nothing but love. Nothing but love from this entity. So, there we go. That's good news, isn't it? And I think we need it. And I think there's enough people that also think we need it. You know, it seems to be a growing consensus going back towards... Well, away from the direction we've been headed in recently, which is just, you know, the science and the technology and all that's going to solve everything for us and we'll have augmented bodies, you know. I mean, is that man's hubris, isn't it, to add some sort of thing to my body to make it better? That's hubris, isn't it? To think we could improve on God's greatest creation. We are God's greatest creations, or well, mostly our souls. But the, even these bodies have the ability to um, enable all aspects of our soul to function. It's the one big element that um, most people don't know about and don't get. And are not able to do it because they don't know about it. But we all can do it when we flop out the womb. Well, I think we can. But it hurts when we witness our parents and not with God, even though we are as babies. That hurts. Makes us cry. Makes us, our parents agitated and they want to stop us crying. So they um, convince the baby that the baby's in the wrong and the baby has a problem. And the baby has to then deal with that. And you get the terrible twos and threes after they made the decision to leave what they had and, and go with what their parents have thought is a difficult time and once you've gone past that out of it you are then on a slight dis decline in your life and you don't really notice it until you're in your mid-twenties at which point you really have no idea what to do about it and you try lots of things <laughs> if you get lucky you find something that works I'm one of them I got lucky about the age of 38 after having uh, some quite uh, strong depressive feelings uh, not that many of them but you didn't need many of them to make me know for absolutely sure that, you know, something wasn't right. And like I said, I got lucky and um, stumbled on some information that I was then able to, which affected me, you know, that I was able to take on. <clears throat> and like they say, um, seek and you will find. And it continues. And you will be disturbed. You will be disturbed. You have to be ready for that. That's why you have to want it. Endure and you will be astonished. You know, you'll be very, very glad that you chose to, you know, to, to seek. Seek it and you will find. Um, yeah. So what sort of miracles are we going to get? Well, I mean, I can feel how it's helped me already, like today. It's definitely helped me keep my calm. So, you know, it's not just because it's, well, I suppose it is. Seven years. Seven years is significant. Seven years is always significant. Every cell in our body has been replaced after seven years, so that physically... You're a completely new being. Every single cell. Well, that's cool. 
<clears throat> so what I've had in these seven years is basically four years of just mostly meditating uh, trying to enable my body my my physical body which had you know gone through the same motions as everybody else left God at the age of two or three and, and gone on a slow decline and I was probably I'll say this in a better state than most people because I had stayed pretty independent I ran my own business, I had spare time, you know, hobbies and interests and things like that. So, I wasn't all that bad, I'd say. And I could, I'd spent time before also trying to, you know, because it just annoyed me, disturbed me a bit, that I couldn't remember a lot of my life. So I had before previously spent time going back sort of year by year and and then connecting to a certain age and having a real fresh memory and actually remembering what it was like to be young. The reason we find it hard to remember is because it, life, we felt so different being young. And we were in a, a higher state, a better state. Um, and when I got back to sort of memories so then doing my work in these four years, I meditated a lot, sometimes like 14, 16 hours a day. You know, depending, I didn't have an awful lot to do. I, my son wasn't living with me then, so I would only see him about three days a week. So I had all this time to do this. So I did that for about four years. And at that point, so I, you know, I'd sort of gone back to having a sort of a feeling of what it was like being in the womb. And how we're connected with God there, and how blurred images, if you think, you know, your eyes are blurred, they don't really work anyway, there's not much light in the womb. But, you know, blurred images, you will make pictures out of them. And, you know, I had these clear images of what <laughs> I remember being in the womb. And when I got to the ones about three, you know, these terrible tantrums, you know, because we say to, think to ourselves, you know, oh, we're innocent, what do we know? We knew. So, you know, you get back to time when you're two or three, you knew stuff, all right? I knew I was kind of falling out with God. I knew that I was having a paddy with God. I knew. But I didn't fully understand. I didn't fully understand maybe why... My dad was getting angry with me, but that was, do you know what I mean? It was this, at, at the time when you've got a feeling, there's information in the feeling, you just know. So you're not the, you know, you're not completely innocent. You made the decision, even though, you know, you were probably in an impossible situation. Well, not impossible, because when you're with God, do you know what I mean? These society things don't weigh heavy. You don't particularly care about them. But anyway, we made the decisions we made. We wouldn't have survived in the society if we hadn't have made those decisions because they would then treat you as an oddball and you would get, you know, you wouldn't go to a normal school or whatever, you know, there would be something wrong with you in their eyes. Until you changed, there'd be something wrong with you. And that would be hard to fight against. So you've got to give up. But it's quite, it's not that difficult. Once you start getting back to the ages of five or six, if you've done that, you're not. You're a very small step away from cracking the the two to three year old one, because now you've got understanding, which you know back then you weren't. You didn't know like, in in think like you knew here, but you didn't know think like, and that's the thing. Like we've gone all we go all the way into think like, and we neglect this, and that's. You know, that's the worst thing to do ever, because this is you. This is your only possession. So, four years meditating, find out truth, I've satisfied my curiosity. I was like, I don't really want to know anymore. <laughs> this will do me for the next million years. And I was like, God, what, you know, what, what are we going to do now? And then I got the phone call from uh, saying, come and get your son from his mother. She'd had enough of him, and he's been living with me since then. So then three, so four years of being able to meditate, and then three years 
I'm still trying to continue a bit when I can with all the um, uh, disturbances and interruptions and stuff because there are challenges to be had and that was a good kind of preparation for Covid you know all this bull crap that they go on and on and on they keep pushing it you know they're not letting go let's vaccinate your kids they're not giving up on this and it's just all utter nonsense you know and you know despite all of this you just gotta you know keep your keep your calm keep your cool because you've got to keep your vibes up right we all we all want to be happy right you know, and if there's a way that you can make yourself a little bit happier, then you should be doing it, you know, for your own sake. And these other things make it more challenging. That's my point. So, there is good news on the horizon. And I wanted to share that with you, and I wanted to maybe explore it a little bit, um, which I've done. I think. So it's like a, I suppose it's like a spirit body then. Uh, he hasn't got a physical body because that wouldn't have been able to survive on the sun. Now I wonder why it took, it's going to take seven years to get from the sun to earth. I wonder if there's something like that. Or whether, you know, um, I don't know, it was something to do with me, something, you know, it's nothing to do with the Christ. It's more like some sort of personal journey that I'm having seven years from the point where I was born again, as I've often said, like a baptism of fire in a sense, it was like seven years, what's coming up. And I'll, um, so for me personally, in my own sort of, uh, you know, meditation um, skills, if you like, or ability or whatever, you know, how, how far have I got to allowing this physical body to uh, uh, experience the, the, the dominant dimension which is emotion, right? Which is that, you know, the body is able to deal with these things with the hormonal system, which is what, you know, is what babies are really good, a perfectly functioning system, and then we, you know, it gets... Or the, the thymus, I think, does keep growing. Obviously, you're a baby, you're growing, right? You're still growing, but you've got a functioning hormonal system. And that's still growing. And that's still functioning in, in adolescence as well. And it might not be being utilised to its best potential, but it, it's a functioning system. And then that's when the thymus begins to decline in most people. That by the time they're old, it's completely gone. Now I've had a lot of, I've done some videos saying they're not heart palpitations, about the heart palpitations. They're not heart pal pal palpitations, it's your thymus operating, right? So I've had these lots of feelings in here and, you know, look, I'm still alive, I haven't had a heart attack. It hasn't been any particular pain. It just feels funny when it's here, you know. So sometimes, you know... W we're always likely to be scared, aren't we? We're worried, oh, oh I'm going to die, you know. And this is why we don't believe in God either, because we'd, we'd like to, and we think, oh, we're probably just wishful thinking. And then we we put off believing it. <clears throat> That's why you must seek, because, you know, if you don't know for sure, you should take a closer look. If you're interested, and you should be, well, either you are or you aren't. But that is definitely an avenue I would recommend going down. Because there will be answers. I, f I found the answers. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't. Why would I? 
It would be such a stupid thing to do. I wouldn't do it to myself. And it's definitely a he. And I think I can sort of understand why it's a he and not a she, or not both. And I think we're, you know, we've got much more connection with Mother God in our day-to-day -day lives, especially in the past when, you know, we were there with nature all the time, connected with nature. So perhaps when we don't connect with nature so much, we're not so connected with Mother God. But even though, do you know what I mean, everything of substance, solid, is Mother God. And Father God is like the photons of light. He's, there's a light here. And the photons of light, that's... They're different. They're not the same atoms. So you look at the solar system and you've got the big old sun in the middle, and then you've got several planets circling it, all different, multi-layered, multi, yeah, multi-tasked, <laughs> anyway, so we have more of a connection with Mother God, <clears throat> you know, always sitting on the floor, you're always connected to the floor, that's your connection to Mother God, and we breathe, that's, I'd say that's both, anyway, so Father God, I would say, you know, plays this, takes this role um, because he doesn't have so much connection with us all the time. But so there's these times when Father God comes and gets involved. And I haven't really been expecting much because... I, I, you know, what with my revelation stuff, you know, I see most of it happening in 21, 28 and 2090. And yeah, we've got something going on for 2033 and this lamb with the 144,000, something with that. I don't quite know how that's going to play out, but I'm quite interested. So, if two, three months have gone by, and nothing has happened, then um, I will have to explain myself and say why. So I think that will do for now then. <coughs> you know the song? Everyone <laughs> <coughs> shouts, no! I don't know if I've remembered it right.